Hi everyone, Patrick here from Dev Diner. We are at CBIT 2017. We're gonna look around and find as much emerging tech as we humanly can and bring it to you in a video. So let's go look. So we've created this new type of 3D volumetric display. It's a uh, swept surface volumetric display that you can look at from any direction. You don't need to wear any special glasses. Um, and if you want to get involved, uh, the best thing for you to do is, is go to our website and uh, sign up and download our API. It comes complete with a simulator. So any code that you write on there uh, will run perfectly first on the simulator and then you can test it on our hardware. If you're anywhere in Australia, then uh, look us up and reach out to us. Uh, there's a chance we'll be in a city near you. Um, we also got a team over in New York as well in the, in, in the US uh, who would love to uh, get involved with whatever you guys are doing. Awesome. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's, you know, if you aren't, you know, in America, you're like a Australian and you're like, oh, volumetric displays, I'll never see one of those in my life. They exist. So uh, try and see them. They're really cool. I'm chatting to a floating head and Adam, who is responsible for the floating head. Yeah. What's up with the floating heads? Well, you know, heads have always been positioned on our bodies. It's time they floated, don't you think? I, I totally agree. I totally agree. What's it like being a floating head? Uh, it's quite comfortable, but at the same time, it's quite surreal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a high five because I love the floating heads. Thank they are brilliant. Much. Thank you for bringing them to see me. I'm Clinton, I am the marketing and electrical engineer at Obelisk Systems. We developed an education platform uh, which at the core is Dialab and Rover. So this lets kids learn how to program in Python and Scratch. You can code uh, very simply using those, uh, an API that makes it nice and friendly for everyone to code with. Uh, it's very powerful too, uh, so because it's using Python you actually can use all of the Python libraries and it has a fun fact that it uses a computer you're connecting to to do most of the processing. So if you're into machine learning, this is a really good way to get a lot of computing power into a tiny little robot because awesome. your computer will do the work. Um, yeah. That's cool. So guys, check them out. Just do some Googling, find Star Lab, there'll be a URL like under there as well. Go there, do it. I am here at the AFK stand and it is now my favorite stand of all of CBET. So I had to stop you and get you to talk about what you guys do and why you have all this emerging tech everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Well, AFK is a full service digital agency and we build out leading edge platforms for our clients and we support that with really engaging media. But we thought for CBIT we'd, we'd bring down our exploration unit. So basically we have um, three prototypes here today. We have a mobile game, we have a VR prototype that's integrated into a touch screen, and then we have another prototype which is real actors, real snakes integrated into a 3D environment. So we just thought for CBIT um, we'd leave the client stuff behind and bring down all the toys uh, and really use the, the people that are coming through to kind of get feedback on the prototypes and kind of see what they like, what they don't like, so we can take that back to base and kind of iterate on those prototypes. Awesome. So if you're looking for somewhere to work and you think there's nowhere that does emerging tech stuff, you should just come work for these guys because it's like pretty cool. The easy way of getting into robotics is to pick up some of the kits that are around, something like Lego Mindstorms, or there are other ones around as well. Um, and they have some fairly easy programming environments to get into, so um, from starting at school level you can start doing it. Um, you can also get into, with schools, get into competitions. A lot of schools now um, get into RoboCup Junior or First Robotics, um, and you can do a lot of, um, get a lot of experience in programming robots going into competitions like playing, playing soccer. Um, at uni, uh, robotics is done in a lot of different 
places. Well, I'm from, from computer science, so if you're interested in the software side of things, you can do a computing course, and um, there are robotics and AI courses there. If you're more interested in the electrical side, in electro engineering or mecha mechanical and mechatronics, uh, so all of those are uh, good to do. Uh, you can do even double degrees. You can do a combination of computer science and uh, mechatronics if you're interested in both. Um, so that's, that's the route. And as you go through, you can start doing more and more uh, advanced courses and even get to the point where you're doing research like we're demonstrating here at CBIT. I am now here in a driverless vehicle in CBIT, which is exciting. Tell us what okay. you guys do. So we're the Australian New Zealand Driverless Vehicle Initiative and really we're here to uh, encourage people to understand that this technology is coming, it's coming quickly and there's huge opportunities in Australia to actually um, inform what happens and to sell your technology and services to companies like RDM Group that are developing these vehicles. Yeah, excellent. And if people want to find out more about you guys, is there a website? Is there somewhere yeah. they could yeah, look it up? You can go to our website, which is adv.org.au, and you can link up to a lot of our partners. We've got over 100 partners across the whole wide ecosystem. We really need, you know, really smart people with great ideas to make this um, evolve the technology. Cool. So get out there. Start working on driverless cars. It's so cool. This is Advantech, we are pretty much a computer industrial hardware company. We manufacture our own hardware and we're, with the IoT space coming along, we're developing softwares such as C Sharp and Node-RED, Visual Basics, just to promote the whole IoT industry. Awesome. And how can people get started if they want to kind of get involved? Is there a website? Is there, you know, where's the easiest way for them to just jump on and be like, yes, that's how I do stuff? Okay, so you can jump onto advantech.net.au and there'll be APIs, SDKs on our forum for the um, IoT space. I'm Louis, I work at Newton's IT. We do business applications of VR, um, but I got into VR as a hobbyist. Um, I do sort of games development. Um, I got into VR by getting a DK2 when they were first on pre-order. I was like, this is the time to get in. Head tracking was the, the thing that brought me in. And um, I wanted to get in early so I could see all of the weird and wonderful demos that people were making early on. Um, I think the best way to get into VR is to get a headset and use Unity because it's very, very easy. It's sort of surprisingly easy. Um, and start to figure out the the difficulty doesn't lie in making the thing, the difficulty lies in making it comfortable. So the thing that like people get really excited about what you all the things all the wonderful things you can do in VR and people don't stop and realize that a lot of those wonderful things make you terrifically ill and are terrible ideas. And you only learn how to avoid those things through experience.